I'd like to call uh, to order the public uh, meeting uh, March 15th at uh, 6.02 p.m. Um, on the fiscal year 23 proposed budget. Um, take a motion to approve the, oh, Shelly, go ahead. Sorry, wrong button. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, take a motion to uh, reprove, uh, review and approve the special meeting minutes from January 26th and February 1st. Just point of order, Mr. Chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you, the first is a public hearing. So you're opening a public hearing and mm -hmm. then you're gonna have the public hearing on the, is, is the first thing on the agenda. So then we'll have the presentation of the budget. We'll close the public hearing and then we will go into the regular agenda. We're gonna start the public hearing and I'm gonna turn it over to you. Yep. Let's do that. All right. Sorry, it's just it's posted, so you have to kind of. No, no, you're, you're right. Yep. Oh, okay. oh, thank you. Um, well, we went through the public, we went through the, the uh, budget last night with the select board um, and finance committees. And so um, we had a great discussion last night. So Shelly again is going to run through this budget. And I think she's going to go a little bit quicker since um, the majority of people who um, you know saw it last night. but. Please stop her and, or slow her down if you have questions. Shelly, I hand it to you. Okay, I'm just gonna jump right to the end here given that we have gone over the process quite a few times between last evening and then other school committee meetings, but it is there for anyone to read that hasn't seen this previously or heard this previously. You can see what our process is. Um, but the draft that we're presenting is the third iteration. Uh, we started off with the original budget increase over 6%. Uh, that did not include any new initiatives. It simply covered uh, adjustments to existing expense accounts, whether that was wages or non-salary expenditures, uh, adjustments based on existing needs and existing expenses. So uh, duplicated staffing, duplicating services from the FY22 budget moving forward into FY23. So our next drafts removed some funds or moved funds to another line. We didn't actually cut any programming. Uh, again, level services, level staffing, uh, but we did fund a couple of pieces through other funding sources. One is a request to the town for a special warrant to cover employee separation costs. And then the additional reduction uh, was to move 50,000 in expenditures to two other revolving funds, which was early childhood education and uh, school choice. So we are presenting a budget for approval tonight of 3.59% uh, for a total general fund budget of $3,145,467. And then the school will use roughly another 775,000 of revolving fund school choice and grant monies to fully fund the budget. I can go over anything if, if school committee has a specific question or if something you know has come up in previous meetings, um, but Darius and I thought we would do the shorter version of this since it's <laughs> maybe the fourth time that, that we're going through. So just let me know where you need me to go from here. Uh, we can look at revolving accounts as well and historical information. So historically the budget has fluctuated. Uh, Sunderland has not had a great deal of consistency year to year. You can see here, you know, we varied from four and a half to 2.75 last year and zero uh, during the year of COVID. So, you know, there's been some variation um, and, you know, we're probably a little bit higher than we would like to be at, at 3.59 uh, without any new initiatives, but the town seemed receptive to that number. Um, and again, we'd have to move funds to another revolving source or a revolving fund or um, make cuts in order to reduce. Um, and then our revolving fund projections, I'm not gonna read through all of them here. We are in good shape predicted across the board. Uh, school lunch will be something that we watch because we did just learn news that lunch will likely not be free for everyone next year. So that will be a fund that we're gonna have to pay special attention to and make sure that our revenue projections will be able to be sustained. Uh, looking back historically, Sunderland has done just shy of 90,000 in revenue. So I do think we'll be okay because reimbursement rates are a little bit higher than they were several years ago. Um, but it is gonna be a shift for us, just like it was a shift going into this idea of free lunches for everyone. It's gonna be a shift coming out of it. 
And then I think the fund that always gets the most attention is the school choice revolving. Uh, you can see there that we're carrying almost a year of revenue in reserves. Uh, we will work to get expenditures down at, as that's been a repeat theme for several years. Um, this number I actually think is going to end up being higher because I was looking at numbers and crunching today and I think our 22 end of year balance is going to be higher due to some changes in special education out of district placement costs. So um, I feel like we're in really good shape based on where things stand right now. Uh, so if there's no other questions, then that's all I have for this presentation and then you'll vote later in the regular meeting. Show yourself softball question that we've already yeah, talked yeah. about, but people have been talking about as fuel prices keep going up, how's that going to affect our budget next year? Yeah, so, you know, that, that's a little bit unknown. We don't have a rate locked in for oil cost yet for next year. We typically do that sometime between now and the summer to lock in our rate, and I'm sitting on it. Rates have gone down already this month for oil as far as the price index that we follow. Even though your home heating fuel might be significantly higher, we're seeing a drop in what we can get through the collaborative through the bid rate. So, you know, I expect that uh, we probably will go over budget next year. That's one of the things that we're gonna talk about this year for the budget. You'll see that line item is over and I can give you some background information on that. So I do think we're gonna see an overage uh, but we generally have accounts like we're going to have this year that fluctuate that we'll be able to pull from um, other accounts that have savings. So I think it's going to be something we have to look at towards the future. You know, obviously with with oil the way that it is, if if rates don't come down, we may have to increase that budget in the future. And just so like the school community it also could affect our transportation budget line as well. So the two are also there's a fuel clause there as well. Yeah, uh, fortunately, we have good numbers built in for SPED, I think, so we should be okay with special education transportation. The the regular bus transportation, uh, we are seeing overages this year as well, and, and that will likely continue, one, due to inflation, and then two, to fuel costs, because we do have an adjustment clause, like Darius said, in the contract. It's hard to pinpoint, you know, exactly what that overage will be, not knowing what's going to happen with the market. It's a good question. Greg? Yeah, oh, by all means. Are Darius, you still, Peter's got something? Greg, can I ask? Yes. Just just a question. I lost connection just for a moment there, and I think somebody asked a question about the impact of the price of oil because that's what Charlie was answering. But for the minutes, I just wondered, uh, was there a question there that someone asked? I'd like to just identify that. Dar Darius asked uh, what the impact on the budget would be. Oh, okay, that's fine. I just didn't know if one, if there was some public you know, involvement that, that needed to be recorded. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate uh, all the, the work and the planning that went into this and also uh, the cooperation on the uh, um, part of the select board. Um, things seem to really go smoothly this year and uh, it feels like we're striking that uh, that balance between trying to get what we can for the schools and also uh, a budget that the town can live with. So, I don't know, did anyone have any others? Like we have been through a lot of this before, but by all means, uh, any other school committee members with questions? All right. So I guess we'll de declare the public hearing closed. Is that the uh, the format, Darius? All right. On to uh, the meeting minutes from January 26th and the minutes of February 1st. Make a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. And second. All right. Any discussion? Probably not. Peter? Yes. Keith? Yes. Jessica? Yes. Greg? Yes. Okay, unanimous. Um, financial statements and warrants. So 13 warrants were signed electronically since last meeting. The total of those warrants was $84,202.57. 
I did email you out the expense reports. I'm happy to take any questions you might have. As I said in my email that had the attachment of the reports, we do have some overages in accounts, so I wanted to explain those. Uh, and then, you know, if I missed anything or if you have questions about specific things, just let me know. Um, so I am looking at my other screen over here, which is why I'm not looking at you. Um, but starting out on page two of that report, uh, under the teacher salaries and wages, you will see that we are projected right now to have an overage at the, the bottom line of the category of about $10,000. I do expect that that's going to change. Part of what's happening right now is we are in transition of some staff who resigned and their full salaries are still in. And there was actually some breaks in employment. So one employee left before Ben hired a new employee. And that happened a couple of different times with the teacher positions this year or the ones that are, are labeled under this category. Um, so we're actually going to see some savings, I believe, in this account category that will not be over in the way that it is stated right now. Uh, so that is in good shape. Hopefully the next time that we meet Brenda in the payroll office, will have made all of those adjustments and got everyone in the right spots and, and move some things around. Um, the next one that I want to mention is uh, IA overage, which is on the next page on page three. Uh, the kindergarten IA line is also over, but if you look at the overall code there, that function code does have savings. Um, and that is, again, due to salary shifting with people coming in and people going out throughout the year. Um, I think at one point, Ben possibly had a vacancy in one of those IA positions for some time. And then we have a, a IA in the budget who's actually working as a one-to-one -one teacher that's being paid back dollar through, for dollar through school choice. So that's going to generate some IA savings for us there. So again, not a true overage in that line, but just wanted to make sure everyone understood that. Uh, other instructional software, which is uh, towards the top of page four, this line, as well as the networking line that's towards the end of the report under function code 4450, I believe it is, these are two lines that are over, and that is why we are increasing next year's budget technology line. We've been underfunded in these software and um, networking needs that are technology related. And so we are seeing the exact result of our increase for our reasoning for our increase for next year. Uh, let's see what else. The nursing line is a true overage. That's also on page four, about halfway down. That's a $5,500 overage on that account line. And that is because of the nurse leader position. Uh, there was a change in the funding for that position for this year after the budget was made. So we are actually over there. And then a big one is the 3,300 for transportation also on page four. So you can see we have some homeless slash foster transportation that was in there. We don't budget for that because we never know if we're going to have to need, have to transport any students who are considered homeless or in foster care. And so we are working with the town. If you remember earlier this fall, you all agreed to move forward in MOU so that we can submit for reimbursement from the state because the state will hopefully, if budgeted, um, give us back anywhere between 20 and 40 percent of that. So the town, Jeff Kravitz and I are working together on making sure that that gets through at town meeting and that the select board approves that. So hopefully we'll recoup some of that money for future use. Special education transportation, we have talked about repeatedly that those lines are over. And so those are true expenditures there. Uh, heating on page five, top of page five. So heating fuel is currently over budget. Um, that is in part because we're over the gallons that we typically use compared to prior years. I've done some historical digging on that in the last month. And we are working with our contractor to make sure that our rate lock is being um, valued because once you go over we lock in 10,000 gallons. Once we go over that amount, which we are over currently, they can charge you at the market rate. So we're trying to negotiate with them a little bit. So I'm hoping that we'll see some reprieve there um, because it is especially high. I think one of the other factors with this that we're going to see in all of the buildings is we had windows open so frequently to increase airflow in the, in the buildings with COVID that 
we're spending a lot more fuel or using a lot more fuel than we normally would. So um, not only are prices going up, but we're using it more because we're trying to increase airflow in the building. So, uh, you know, we're at the end of heating season, so I don't expect this to continue to go up. Uh, we did just get, I believe, a delivery this week. I think Michelle told me an invoice came in. So Bill and I talked, we may need one more small fill up before summer rolls around before July 1st, but we're going to try to stretch it out to see if we can get into the new budget year. Um, and I think that covers it. There were some other minor ones. Buildings general repairs is over. That's pretty typical for Sunderland. We do go over almost every year in that line. Um, that's nothing, you know, major catastrophic in there. It's just normal things that come out, come up throughout the year. Uh, so that's a couple thousand over. So Bill, uh, our facilities director, him and I are in conversation right now about anything for between now and the end of the year that would normally fall under that line. You know, is it something that can be put on hold until the new budget year or do we have funds from another line item? So if you look at the last page of the budget, you'll see that, you know, we still have 151,000 to expend. And so what I'm doing at this point is going through line by line of any account on that last page. There are second to last page. There's a good example. So central office insurance benefits on, on uh, line 5200 you'll see still has 22,000 remaining in the budget. So what I will do is take that line item, go back and look at the prior two years and see what we've spent. And if I predict that we'll have any savings there, it helps cover our overages. So I'm not concerned that we're gonna have a budget shortfall. I just wanted to make you make sure that you understood what those overage were, because some of them are pretty significant at this time of year. Um, so I still feel like we're in good shape. You know, you often hear from me, the budget's on track. Well, I, I still think that that's the case. Uh, and as I mentioned during the FY23 budget presentation, if we do have issues that come up and have some major building repairs that have to be done and, and eat up any surplus, um, we are going to have extra school choice because of some changes in out of district placement. So I feel like we're still in really good shape and we've, and we've got a safety net if we need it. So if I missed anything or if you have questions about anything that I went over, please just jump in and let me know. Peter? Um, I guess you sort of really answered this, but the question would be whether any of these, uh, are all these changes that you've mentioned uh, where we're uh, running a bit short this year, uh, are they ref are things reflected in our budget for next year that will uh, minimize this effect for that year? So the, I, I think they are. Yeah, the software counts, we did adjustments there already. Um, and then there's some other small things. The nurse leader, we, we budgeted for that so that we won't have a overage there next year. Fuel is one thing that has not been adjusted, uh, but special education, transportation, we've already accounted for that. So I think most of this we are capturing in our changes. And, and that's part of the reason we couldn't push any new initiatives forward, right? Because we did have to increase some of our existing account lines just to do level services. Thank you. Yep. All right. No other uh, questions. I guess we'll uh, let's see. Thank you, Shelley. <clears throat> we have the principal's report. Hey, good evening, everyone. So, a few things to bring up tonight. One is the early childhood playground project. We are doing very well right now. We are about four to five weeks away from putting the project out to bid with anticipated groundbreaking happening towards the end of the school year. One of the things we've lined up is to have our town highway department help out with the demolition, um, the highway department along with volunteers as well. So one of the ways that we were looking to cut costs on a pretty significant portion of the project was to remove the current safety surface, remove the chain link fencing, the play structures and the shed. Um, one of the companies that we do uh, business with, USA Recycling, has um, agreed to dispose of all of those materials at no cost. And so that is going to have to happen prior to the school year ending so that the contractor can begin as soon as school lets out. Um, one of the uh, funding sources that we have available for the project 
is through the state's capital budget. And um, that needs to be spent by June 30th, which is kind of the rush on the timeline there. So it's going very well. Um, we have around, we're sitting on around $300,000 right now. Part of that can, um, includes the contingency and the contractor O&P. So um, there, there's a chance that it will, it could end up costing a little bit more. And um, to help uh, so solve that issue, we have added a few add alternates for the project. So, which include like the sandbox, um, a large climbing boulder. And so when bids come in, if they come in uh, at an amount that we can afford those other items, then we'll be able to pay for those at that time. Um, any questions on the playground project? Anyone? Go ahead, Peter. Peter. Just, uh, I guess question if any, any, uh... Anyone would care to make a contribution, uh, and you know, it could be funds, could be uh, labor, could be who knows what. Uh, should they just get get in hold with you, Ben, or what's the process? Yeah. So, if if townspeople are interested in making a contribution to the project, we've set up an early childhood playground project um, account through the town, and so you know, any donations would would come to my office, and then we would deposit it from there. In terms of, of labor, um, you know, after speaking with the landscape designers, they really said, you know, once the contractor controls the site, then um, it, it's tough to line up volunteer work at that point. Um, but what we are looking to possibly do beforehand, like I said, is remove some of the safety surface, um, tear down some of the other equipment. So that might be a time where we could use some volunteer help and, and families with uh, some tractors to help pull out the fence, fence posts. Hey ben, we should talk about how we can publicize um, uh, gifts and kind to the, to the playground and um, to the community. I know you've reached out, reached out, but then when it's real, then sometimes that helps out on those kind of things. Um, and, then, and then we got to talk about how we're going to recognize those who have done already donated stuff and that kind of thing too. Absolutely. That's our list of things to do. Yeah, mostly I, the only thing I'd say is a comment that uh, I'm so impressed when COVID hit and things got so crazy, I, I figured this would get pushed out and uh, you guys haven't uh, broken stride on this. So it's uh, it's headed forward. I'm super impressed. Yeah, this I is a fun part. I gotta, ben, I got to put it back on you. Ben is the one who's been driving this the whole time. He has been the he's been in front and in back of this wagon, pushing it and leading the way at the same time. So um, I can't take, take I can't give very little credit. And um, I think I would say he's been just phenomenal moving this thing forward. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, of course. And you know, hopefully, uh, come beginning of next school year, the uh, the little ones will have a brand new playground. So it's, you know, and it's and it's not just when school is in session. Um, often when, you know, I, I drive by the school on the weekends or, you know, you can see the the playground from, from 116. Families use this space uh, throughout the summer and in after school hours. So it's, a, it's an important um, part of our community and it will certainly get a lot of good use. And- yeah, and so what else? Um, we, uh, our, our PTO generously um, agreed to help us out uh, with the funding for some Rube Goldberg inspired chain reaction workshops called Playful Engineers. The workshops were led by local artist, Jay Mankita and students in grades K through six. Um, the past two Fridays, were able to head down to the gym and using household items, materials, tools, and toys, build different uh, chain reaction systems. And they had a ton of fun with that. And this was actually one of our first assemblies featuring an out of school um, group that we've had since the pandemic began. So thank you to our PTO for helping to fund that. And then lastly, uh, today was book character dress up day. And I wanna give a shout out to our library media specialist, Rachel Kidder. Um, who helps to lead this wonderful event um, on a yearly basis. 
And we had an influx of different literary characters roaming the halls of SES. And then our sixth grade student ambassadors visited all the classrooms of the younger grades to read to those students. So um, we've had a few great community building events take place over the last few weeks. Outstanding. And that's the report. Thank you. Any questions for Ben? All right. Thanks, Ben. All right. On to public comment. Uh, I don't think we received anything in writing ahead of time, but it looks like there's some people here. Uh, anyone wish to make a, a comment? All right. Um, I'll just maybe say uh, I apparently messed up yesterday at the select board meeting um, and I, I meant to make it generally known that uh, the right place to come with concerns about whether or not the school was doing the right job of balancing the, the services it provides with the tax burden on the people is the school committee. And that was a general reminder. Uh, unfortunately, it, it breaks my heart. It came across as a, accidentally as a criticism of Wendy Hool, who's a, a wonderful human being and a, a real asset to the town. Uh, so I, I've apologized to her and uh, that uh, that was unintentional and, and it's, uh, but I, I felt I should say something here because uh, Wendy's a, a fantastic person and a real uh, asset to the town. Um, and if there's no other public comment, uh, COVID-19 update. So, I mean, this was put on the agenda when we put this agenda together a month ago. Um, so really just the update is that, you know, we started our mask optional um, approach on Monday. And um, I mean, I have only, I've asked Ben how it's going. So I'll, I'll, I'll ask Ben then how's it going over there, Ben, with the, the transition for both faculty and students. Yeah, the transition uh, the last couple of days have, has been very smooth. There's a mix of both um, students and faculty and staff uh, who still are wearing their masks, which is perfectly fine. Um, but it's uh, it, it's continuing on. Um, we've we're seeing a, a smiling faces in the hallways that we haven't been able to see since early March uh, from a couple of years ago, 2020. So overall, it's been very smooth. And our, our district numbers are, are continuing to stay. Um, extremely low to non-existent in the sense we had had two weeks of pool testing without um, without a positive case. And we haven't had a case reported to a school nurse in the last five days of school. So um, if today's was updated prior to this meeting, I checked it, but I didn't, I didn't talk to Meg. So it, it, it's possible this thing happened today, but I didn't know about it. Um, and I mean, it's tough. I mean, it's it's good to where we're at. Where at, where at. Um, I read a funny article just to make everybody kind of think for a moment that two years ago, just about this time, we we're making comments. I'm going to be working from home for two weeks, and then this whole thing, <laughs> thing kind of came from there. So um, it's kind of a hopefully we're nearing the end of uh, of that journey, um, but we're keeping an eye on things, and, um, and we'll see how things go. So that's where we're at with COVID. All right. Questions, comments. On to capital planning update, please. Um, I threw that on there because Peter, at the last meeting, we were discussing what was happening with that. Um, Peter, do you want to jump in because you would attend those meetings or I can read the report you gave me when, either way? I don't no, want to take I, I'll just, just quickly summarize where we stand at this point because um, basically this is an unusual year for, for capital planning because of the ARPA money the town has received. Uh, there is the opportunity to take care of some needs that uh, no way we would have been able to handle this year. And, uh, you know, it certainly has been clear over the years that we tend to uh, not be able to keep up with our capital needs at the school and in the town is in general. And so this has been just uh, uh, a godsend this year for having this funding. And we are, as a town, working our way through how we're going to use it uh, so that, uh, uh, the, there, there are two parts of it. One is our normal capital budget, which, uh, 
the capital planning committee, which I sit on, is going through and developing recommendations and uh, the projects on that list will go through the usual process of going to uh, the select board for their approval and then to town meeting for its approval and then the funds being available the 1st of July. Uh, the process for the ARPA money is that uh, it essentially just needs the approval of the select board and then the funds are available immediately. So what we've done so far, as far as uh, the school uh, project is concerned, okay. is that like Peter, would you like me to share that screen? Yeah, if you got the list, that would be great. Weird. A little bit hard for me to read, but uh, yeah, it's weird. Let me let me try again. If you open it in Acrobat and hit Control L, nice and big. You know, I don't think we have to. I think I'm just going to go through this pretty quickly and right. and mainly mainly just a couple questions about what is still on the list and and you know that we're hoping to get done. So uh, the, the the stuff that we already have approval for and all of these are approved with ARPA funds, meaning that that the the school is is taken you know already starting to get them done um, are. Uh, uh, another year of the rim band replacement, uh, the dishwasher replacement, which I gather has been ordered and will be uh, uh, installed this summer, uh, the PA system replacement, uh, the we had a problem with the plumbing and the regulating valve back in, was it January, February time period? I don't remember exactly when. Uh, I think actually January got fixed on Martin Luther King Day and it cost about eighteen thousand dollars and we weren't sure about how that was going to get paid but uh that also has been approved for arpa funding so that's a real uh, break there uh the uh, replacement of the most almost all of the windows on the south side of the building uh, except for several larger ones around the principal's office uh and these are windows that were original with the building when it was built over 30 years ago and then finally the Boiler replacement, which was the last thing that was approved, and that has been uh, ordered. Uh, the quote that we received back in January that was supposedly good for only two weeks, that quote, so that process is now underway, and the expectation that will be ready for the next heating season, which is great. What's still on the list um, are the following things. One is glycol sprinkler replacement. Uh, I'm just going to make here my guess. My guess is that that uh, this will be approved at some point in this process. Uh, nothing is guaranteed until it happens, but uh, my guess is uh, that will be a replacement. Uh, the phone system upgrade so far it's had a favorable comment. Um, I'm optimistic that that will be approved, but who knows? Uh, there are uh, repairs needed at uh, one of the uh, gable vent soffit areas uh, up high on the building. Um, my guess there is that uh, we'll get that approved. Uh, oil tank improvements, that's still a, a, a still an area where it's not clear everything we need to do, but that's been broken down into some smaller parts, and we may get some of that uh, taken care of by the time we're done here this spring. Uh, and then the one big one, which is the roof replacement at nearly, you know, uh, initial quote that Bill got was something close to $500,000. Um, I don't have any expectation that we're going to get that approved this spring. And uh, But what I do think is that we, by basically making this item visible, by uh, getting it on the list of everything, by getting people thinking about it and aware about it, and this is not this is where it's important that we, uh, we do all this stuff as a town and not just as a school, because now we have the town side realizing that we have to deal at some point in the next couple, three, you know, two, one, two, three years, something with the roof, okay? And it's not just falling on us to somehow do it, okay? So um, my guess would be that that won't be done out of uh, a chunk of the ARPA funds, but that over the next year or two, we'll have a serious discussion with the town about how this and maybe a couple of other larger items uh, we can wrap up and you know how we're going to finance it. Okay, whether we're going to finance it through some sort of debt exclusion at town meeting, or whether we're going to finance it through some borrowing 
program over five or 10 years or something like that. Uh, but there seems to be uh, at least what we've accomplished at this point is it's visible. It's on the table. Everybody knows it's going to need to be done. And that's a big first step. OK, so I think that, uh, you know, when when this suddenly, you know, we had presented the first uh, bunch of projects back in December, I believe it was, and we were limiting ourselves to about four things. And then we realized that the ARPA money was like really here and really could be spent and really could be spent without a lot of uh, terrible paperwork. Uh, and so we've moved, you know, this has been just we're continually moving forward here and it's been a pleasure to be doing this. And I think that, uh, you know, there'll be a, a bunch of extra work falling on uh, Bill Hildreth, the uh, director of facilities, you know, making sure these projects all get done and get done properly. Uh, but hopefully, Ben, there'll be less stuff at the school that's driving you nuts because it doesn't work. Um, so that, you know, that's what we're hoping for. So that's where we are. And, and I continue to, um, you know, to continue. We have capital next capital planning meeting is next Tuesday and we keep having these and we keep things moving forward. And so I'll let you know when stuff happens. Outstanding. Any other questions, comments? I'll just say I'm super grateful that uh, we're having this really active dialogue with the town and uh, the, certainly it's a good use for the ARPA funds. Um, the, the need for the school isn't going away, so we, we have to maintain it um, and uh, appreciate all the, the work there. All right. Um, let's see. Now that's on to a fiscal year 23 proposed budget vote. Oh. Yep. Uh, for three million one hundred and forty five thousand uh, six hundred and or four hundred and sixty seven dollars. So moved. Second. All right. Any discussion? All right. Uh, Jessica. Yes. Peter. Yes. Keith. Yes. Greg. Yes. Unanimous. All right. April school Greg. committee. Go ahead, Peter. I just want to say that, and I've said some stuff to this effect before, but um, just real gratitude to, to Shelly in particular, but also to Darius for um, the work that they do on a just continuing basis for um, making our finances uh, clear, uh, understandable, um, and exceptionally well managed. And that uh, particularly in, well, I guess it's always going to be true of a school budget. There are always going to be, you know, problems and there are also going to be, uh, hopefully also some good news too, as you go through the year and you try and execute it. But again, the, the sense that I have of the competence that's being used to do all this stuff is it's really, really nice because, um, you just know that all this stuff is in good hands and, uh, thank you particularly Shelley, for, for the wonderful work you complete, you continue to do and. Boy, it really is a pleasure. And then, and then, just one other little thing: there was in your packet. You noticed there was a letter from Darius to the select board about the boiler, because somehow when they passed the approval for the ARPA funds, uh, the select board decided that they wanted a letter saying it was a high priority. And like the next day, Darius said, "You know, the, the letter was in. I, you know, I let Darius know, and like right away, the letter was in. And if you happen to read the letter, I mean, it just." It just sets just exactly the right tone. Like, yeah, this is important, but thank you. And thank you for working together on this as a town and, and all that. And, you know, it's a little thing, but things are important as we try, you know, whenever we have these problems, we try to work together because that's the best way. To do things. So I just want to mention the, the really good leadership we have here and how important it is. Indeed. Keith, you had something you wanted to add? You're muted. Yes. I was just going to echo what Peter said. Uh, having done this a few times now, there's been years where it's been really contentious. There's been a lot of angst. This year was really remarkably smooth. So I just appreciate the leadership and echo what Peter says. That's where I would have gone to. Is it's, it's not just numerically competent; it's low friction. So, uh, all right. We try not to cause too many fights, but sometimes we have to have fun. 
sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, are there any reports, superintendent report? Um, yeah, my superintendent report is kind of it, the, you skipped over if it's not a big deal because I could just put it in the superintendent report. But our next meeting is a joint meeting, um, yeah. and that's where you're you know, a lot of information that come your way. And so Sarah Mitchell, you know, without Kim in place right now, Sarah Mitchell and I are putting together the calendars for next year. So you can be expecting that. We will have the Romney Associates giving us an update on um, their uh, work with us through their anti-racism and equity work. Um, and so they're gonna give a report to all of you. So um, if you have questions on that, um, that's gonna be, that's gonna be great as well. Um, whilst we're uh, putting forward planning for next year, PD planning, um in directions of there as well so it's kind of a big all the other stuff that it's actually the really important stuff i know we get caught up in budgets and we get caught up in um other things but this is going to be so it's that so please try to make that meeting i know it's a long one where you have to do a lot of listening um but it's where we can kind of get a lot of information out um and right now the um unit 38 is still we're we are still we have a contract, um, tentative contract in place for the upcoming um, in upcoming years. However, neither side has ratified it yet. So we're waiting on that ratification. Then we will go and um, it'll be put it on the agenda so us to approve in an upcoming meeting. It's likely gonna, and I said this, I'm saying it out loud, even though I sent it to an email to the school committee, it's likely probably gonna be the May meeting um, unless we wanna have a special meeting just to do that in April. But by the time we go back and forth correcting little typos and that kind of stuff and making sure everything clear likely it's going to probably be into april before everything's kind of firmed up on that so um that's kind of where we are there if you have questions on that but um yeah that's what we got good deal questions comments there all right so uh that's great news and again uh good stuff with the the negotiations being all but uh dry ink um we have an executive session on the agenda anyone think there's a reason to actually make use of it all right then uh, i'll take a motion to adjourn so moved okay i'll second that all right uh keith yes jessica yes peter yes greg Yes, thank you all.